here's a quick tutorial on winemaking for all you budding winemakers. Here will be the basics, um, but also it's going to give us a little insight to how we make wine so we can better understand why there's so many different styles of wine out there. So we're going to start with a pop quiz. Okay, we've got three colors of wine, uh, still wines. So we got red, this is rosé, and then we've got white, right? But we only have two colors of grapes. We've got white and red grapes, or green and black, however you want to call it. So how do we get three different styles of wine from only two different colors? Well, uh, we're gonna find out by digging our teeth into it, okay? So grab a red grape, I know my colors, and white grape, and take a bite of both, okay? Mmm. You say. Okay, what you're gonna see already is that these taste very different. And not only just taste, but certain um, structural components them are very different. And we're gonna talk about that in the red, white, and rosé wine tutorial. So check those out as well. And save your grapes for them. But, now I want you to look at these two grapes and notice similarities and differences. Okay, first, it's obvious what's different. Okay, a red grape with red skin and a green grape with uh, skin void of color, right? Now look at the inside though. This is interesting. I think this comes as some surprise or people just never stop to think about it. But if you look at the inside of these, you're going to see that they're both have clear juice. There's no color on the inside. So if we want to make our red or rosé wine, we have to be using black grapes because that's the only place we're really getting any significant color from. I'll go ahead and finish those grapes off. Um, let's take a look at some of the differences between red and rosé and white wine making. We just hit upon one. First, for red and rosé wine, you have to use black grapes. Second, after the grapes are harvested, they'll be brought into the uh, winery. And here's our, our table grapes. Now these don't, make, <laughs> these don't make wine, but for the purposes of this tutorial, they work great. So we bring our grapes into our uh, imaginary winery and we crush them. That's a, a, that's a key word to uh, winemaking process. You crush them. What crushing is doing is it's breaking the grapes. And what that does, it breaks the grapes open so that the juice can start to be released and the, the color and flavor from the skins can now interact and affect the juice. So when we do red and rosé wines, we have white juice with black skins. And the time that that white juice spends on the black skins will determine whether it's a red or rosé wine. So for instance, here are two wines that, or not wines, I wish. <laughs> These are two grape juices that I um, extracted based on different times spent on the skins. So th this one, I allowed the grapes to sit on the red skins for about, I don't know, an hour, okay? Whereas this one, let's get a better shot of that one, this one is actually a lot darker because I allowed it to sit on the skins for a week. I mean, what a wine geek am I that I actually crush table grapes at home and let them sit in my refrigerator. But what you can see here is the difference now between, oh, we'll get a bit, there we go, between red wine and rosé wine, right? It's just the amount of time that the juice spends on the skins. Okay, so real easy stuff, right? So we've got white juice on black skins for red and rosé wine. Now here's where the magic happens. We add in yeast. We can either add in yeast or sometimes in some rare exceptions, the winemaker will choose to use indigenous yeast, yeasts or yeasts that are already found either in the winery or on the grapes. But usually we're gonna add in some yeast and then the magic happens. And here's a great picture of that magic starting to happen. And the yeast will start to eat the sugar that's found in the grapes and what it gives off is our magical ethanol alcohol as well as CO2. So when you look at this picture here, you can actually tell that this has started to ferment. You see the grape skins still in there um, with the juice, but you see foam. And that foam is the CO2 that's being given off as a result of fermentation. So we'll allow that to happen, and then usually what happens with uh, especially red wines is they uh, will press the wines. So fermentation sometimes will be complete before pressing, but usually they'll press it before fermentation is complete. And what I mean by complete is has the uh, yeast eaten all the sugar, 
Or has the yeast uh, eaten as much sugar as the winemaker wants to, for them to eat? Basically, it's how sweet does the wine, does the winemaker want the wine to be? And then we press. And all pressing is doing is we are extracting the, all the juice from the skins. Because when we crush it, it just opens them up. And if you do this at home, you'll see that the, the pulp sticks. It wants, it wants to stay with the skin. But when we press it, we apply pressure to extract all that juice. Now, the more pressure you put on the grape skins, the more juice you'll extract. But at the same time, you're going to be extracting more, um, sometimes more coarse material uh, from the skins. So here's our first lesson in why some wines are more expensive. Sometimes some winemakers choose to do a gentle pressing. So they don't want to extract all the coarser parts of the grape. They just want to uh, extract the finest juices, you know, how the, the, the free run juice is often how they'll describe it. And what that's gonna give you is a finer wine, but less juice. Less juice equals higher prices. So one lesson in why some wines, not all, but some wines can be a bit more expensive. And then after that, uh, it can be sent, after fermentation, pressing, it can be sent uh, directly to bottle, bottled, and sent to your local wine store where you can pick up a bottle and enjoy it. Or we can do an optional maturation. And two very popular methods of maturation include our stainless steel tanks. Here they are here, I'll pull them up for you. So this is a stainless steel tank and that is what we call inert. It's not gonna give any flavors to the wine, it's just gonna maintain it. And it's also gonna prevent oxygen from uh, entering into the wine. Um, and our other major option that we see around the world is going to be our oak barrels. So here are some newer oak barrels and what new oak barrels will do will provide some kind of flavor often uh, and it would seem oh yeah well oak provides oak flavors. Not so much. Um, what we actually see instead of oaky or woody flavors are flavors like vanilla cinnamon, chocolate, smoke, toast, kernel. Those are all flavors that come from newer oak barrels. Or a winemaker might say, I wanna use an oak barrel, not for the flavor that it gives, but because this is more permeable to oxygen. And the ingestion of oxygen by wine will affect not only its flavor, but color. So these are just one of many options that winemakers might use for optional maturation. So let's compare red and rosé winemaking to white winemaking. For white winemaking, we can actually use black or red grapes. We can use both of these, and the reason is, is that the juice is white on both of these. So if, as long as we remove the skins on our red grape immediately, we have a chance, not always, but we have a chance of getting a, a very pure white wine. And the best example of that is going to be Champagne. One of the major grapes used in Champagne and other sparkling wines of the world is Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir is a red grape, but what they do is they extract the juice right away from the skins and don't allow the color to get into the wine. And so you end up with a very clear white Champagne or sparkling wine, and yet they're using a red grape, Pinot Noir. So. Now here's another big difference. We crush, like we did before, okay? Oh, we're on the white wines. We crush, right? Bup, bup, bup. Um, so we release the juice, but then we also press immediately. So we apply lots of pressure. And again, depending on the, the, the style and also quality of wine the winemaker wants to make, we'll apply different forms and amounts of pressure. But we'll apply pressure because we don't want the skins interacting with the juice. So here, let's, um, let's see, I'm getting, getting good at this. So here is a, um, my white grapes that were crushed and then pressed immediately. And you can see, this is a, a light colored wine, but it's not white, it's not void of color. It still extracts some of the color, not only from the skins, but maybe a little from the juice. And this actually time, I did it this morning and already it's starting to brown a little. Good lesson in changing of color. That should be another, that's another tutorial. Color of wine, we'll, we'll get to it, I promise. But you can see that this is a white wine, but it has some maybe straw colors or a green or, or yellow tinge to it that we would expect from our 
white grains, okay? So we've done crushing and pressing, which is a di big difference between uh, white wine and red and rosé wine making. And so we're only gonna be using our white juice and then we allow the magic to happen. We add yeast, we allow fermentation to happen. And this is interesting, I've got a great picture of uh, fermentation actually happening in an oak barrel. So fermentation doesn't always have to happen in large uh, stainless steel tanks or large oak uh, cuvées. They can happen in these small oak barrels. And what's interesting here, again, you see that foam. So you know fermentation is happening. It's in the process of fermenting because CO2 is being given off and it's evident by the, the, um, the appearance of that foam there. So we uh, do, we add the yeast as we do with red and uh, rosé wine. We see fermentation happening. And then again, we have optional maturation. It's the same again for red and rosé wine. Um, we can either send it right to bottle and send it to your local store, or you can uh, add it or uh, uh, put it into oak barrels or stainless steel tanks or many other different options. Some winemakers get a real creative with uh, the uh, maturation process. So this is just a basic introductory tutorial on uh, red, rosé, and white wine making. And we're gonna have another tutorial or a couple other tutorials specifically about red, rosé, and white wine. So we hope to see you there. And in the meantime, this is Jessica Bell from My Wine School, hoping to make wine your way. Have a good night.